Good day. Hello. How wonderful to, to be here today and having this opportunity to share some of my key themes with you and how we could potentially deal with it. The theme is resilience. My name is Ennio Sinise. I'm the group CEO of Oros Consulting Group, a niche boutique consulting company helping asset intensive industry navigating through the challenges that we all face today, among which the energy transition, digitalization, and other challenges that basically cause us to question our resilience. So allow me to start with a story. Imagine a company in 23 that found itself grappling with soaring energy costs due to geopolitical tensions, disrupted supply chain, and a workforce deeply affected by social unrest. This isn't, this is not a dystopian future. It is our present. And today, I would like to talk about how companies can build resilience in the face of multiple challenges, including the energy transition, social unrest, war and supply chain disruptions, and the challenge of the digitalization. This is definitely not something that we can cheer about. These are major challenges. But the key in these major challenges, to be able to face those challenges, is resilience. And the question is, how resilient are we? And how can we become more resilient, or at least ensuring that we are sufficiently resilient for those challenges? The key is a resilience assessment. And the resilience assessment should be throughout the entire value and supply chain of your or a company. I will come back to that later. First, allow me to set the context by diving into these geopolitical challenges. I already mentioned it, but the energy transition. The world is shifting to renewable energy sources with different layers of success. And it's driven by the need to combat climate change, among other things, because let's not forget the environment. However, this transition isn't smooth. It involves substantial infrastructure changes, significant investment, and navigating a complex web of regulations. Companies are under pressure to reduce their carbon footprint while ensuring energy security and affordability. Social unrest, war, social unrest from protests to political instability affects workforce stability and market conditions. Wars and conflicts disrupt global markets, create refugee crises, and lead to sanctions and trade restrictions. Good examples are, well, good examples. Examples are the recent conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East, which have starkly illustrated these impacts. We then have supply chain disruptions. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted vulnerabilities in global supply chains, but the problem persists. Natural disasters, trade wars, logistical bottlenecks can cause delay, increasing costs and create incremental uncertainty. So the semiconductor shortage, for example, has affected industries from the automotive to electronics. We daily notice that because we got delays if we want to order a new car, you know, in our side of the world, but in other sides of the world, it's also impacting CapEx planning for grid companies. So let me let me drill down to the to the core of this. The need for resilience. Resilience in business is the ability to withstand adapt to and recover from disruptions. It is about more than just survival. It's about thriving in a volatile environment and seize the opportunity that the resilience challenge is also providing you with. Companies that lack resilience face significant risks. The first one is of course operational risk in production and services. The interruptions in production and services can lead to standstills, if eventually could even lead to, to bankruptcy. 
financial risks, in the increased cost and reduced revenues. It's a major, a major topic and, um, you know, a keep me awake type of issue for many CFOs. Reputational risk, loss of customer trust and market share. So, how should we approach this? Well, the question is, can companies become resilient? And the answer is yes, but. The answer lies in a comprehensive resilience assessment across the entire value and supply chain. So what are some of the components of a resilience assessment? As I mentioned before, there is this value chain analysis. Evaluate each step from production to delivery. Identify critical processes and assets. Determine which part of the value chain are most vulnerable. Supply chain analysis. Map out your supply chain in detail. Identify weak points, such as single source suppliers or regions prone to disruptions. Basically, try to apply a credit matrix to your purchasing strategies. Scenario planning. Prepare for various potential future states. You can develop response strategies for different scenarios, from energy shortages to political upheavals. And with scenarios, if you have three scenarios, I can assure you that not one of these scenarios will unfold exactly as you have planned them. But what will happen is that if you do it properly, you will have three scenarios and the hybrid outcome will allow you still to be prepared for anything that is coming at you. So, once you have done all that, it still needs to be implemented. And implementation is often a, a major issue. I give you a couple of keys that you could consider when you are planning for your resilience strategy. The first one is to identify key assets and processes. Prioritize critical areas that are essential for your operations. Second, assess risk assessment, assess risks and vulnerabilities. Use the data analytics to evaluate potential risk. Of course, you need to have reliable data. Without reliable data, you get unreliable information and unreliable information leads to unreliable intelligence. Understand the likelihood and impact of different disruptions. Third, develop a contingency plan or develop contingency plans. Create action plans for different scenarios. Ensure you have an alternative suppliers, backup production facilities and flexible, and flexible logistics solutions. Continuous monitoring and adaption is key four. Regularly update your strategies based on new information and changing conditions. Use technologies like AI and big data to enhance your monitoring and predictive capabilities. I repeat myself, please make sure that the quality of your data is such that you can convert it in good information because only with quality data good information, you can create a decision-making platform and a scenario designing platform, which is based on solid intelligence. Now, let me share with you uh, two success stories that I have seen occurring, okay? So a global tech company successfully navigated the energy transition by investing early in renewable energy projects and diversifying its energy sources. This is not only reducing its carbon footprint, but also it stabilized its energy cost. Another example is a consumer goods company, and they have implemented a robust resilience assessment, during which a period of intense uh, social unrest in one of its key markets, it maintained operations by having contingency plans in place that included alternative suppliers and flexible working workforce arrangements. So allow me to join, to join the conclusion of my, my chat here. To recap, resilience is crucial in today's volatile world. And it, has, and it has become more volatile than ever before. Okay? By conducting a thorough resilience assessment, companies can identify vulnerabilities, 
prepare for disruption, and ensure they can adapt and thrive. As we look to the future, it is clear that resilient companies will not only survive, but also seize the opportunities that arise from these challenges. And those that fail may not withstand the pressure of an uncertain world, of an increasing, increasingly uncertain world. So let me leave you with a final thought, okay? The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. In a world of constant change, resilience isn't just a strategy. It's a vision for the future where companies can thrive despite adversity. Be that resilient company. Thank you.